Hey guys, welcome back. We have discussed a lot about dynamic programming and how we can achieve the solution using dynamic programming, right? Now let's start working on some problems. In this lecture, we're going to solve staircase problem with help of dynamic programming. So let's see what this problem is about. In this, you're given n stairs and step size. For example, step size can be one or two. That means either you can take one step or two step at a time. Now objective is to find total number of ways to reach to the top. That is to reach to the nth stair. So there are multiple ways to reach to the top as you can either take one or two step at each stair, right? For instance, if there are four stairs, you can reach to the top by taking one step at each stair. So one way is one, 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 one. So one at each step, right? Or you can take two step at first, then one step and again one step. Or you can take one, then two step and then one step. Or one step, one step and two steps. Or you can take two steps and again two steps. So there are total five ways to reach to the top. Now let's think of the solution. Let's say we have reached to the nth stair. If we have reached to the nth stair, obviously we have came from either n minus one step or from n minus two step because step size is one and two, right? So total number of ways to reach to the nth stair will be the summation of ways to reach to n minus one stair and ways to reach to n minus two stair. And that's the case when you're having step size one and two only. So if you have k step sizes, then what? Then you need to add ways to reach to n minus one, n minus two, going on to n minus k step sizes. So that gonna be an arithmetic series. We can write it as summation of ways to reach to n minus j step, where j is in range from one to k. And if you're given random step sizes like 2, 3, 5, etc., then j would be every step size. This recursive solution is working. We have four stairs and we can take either one or two or three steps, right? So to calculate ways to reach to the fourth stair, we need to calculate ways to reach to third and second and first step, right? Again, to calculate ways for third stair, we will recursively calculate ways to reach to second first and zeroth step and this continues when we have negative values as n take it as zero and when we left up with n equals to zero that's our base condition so there we will return one as there will be always one way to reach to any stair from stair zero so ways one will be one and then you have ways zero which will return 1 and that's how ways to reach to second stair will become 2. Then you again have ways 1 to calculate it. You need to go down and get the result for the base condition which will return 1 and again you have ways 0 that gonna return 1 so total ways to reach to the third stair will be 4. Then you have ways 2 you calculate it again by dividing into sub problems and you calculate recursively, same with the subproblem ways 1. Ways to gonna return 2 and ways 1 returns 1. So total ways to reach to the fourth stair will be 4 plus 2 plus 1, which is 7. So you can see we need to calculate ways 1, ways 2 more than once. We have overlapping subproblems in order to get the solution recursively. So to avoid that, Let's implement memoization with this recursion, which is our first solution using dynamic programming as this is the top-down approach. So what we do in top-down approach, we take an array to store result of each and every recursive call, right? So we're taking an array of n plus one size because we need to handle the base case when the value of n is zero, right? So we calculate ways to reach fourth stair by adding the ways at third step, at second step, and at the first step. But in order to calculate the ways, 
at fourth step we need to calculate the ways at third step we, and to calculate the ways at third step we have to calculate the ways at second step then at the first step and then at the zeroth step which is the base condition for us so base condition will return one so we do update cell zero with one in the array so ways one will be one plus zero that is one so we update one at index one then for zero we pick up the value present at index zero and return this one for negative values it gonna be always zero so ways for two will be one plus one two that we fill at index two now we have ways one this time we don't need to calculate it again we will just pick the value from index one and will directly return it similarly when we'll be having sub problem ways two we don't need to calculate it we'll just pick the result that we've already calculated and stored in the array so this will continue and we get total seven number of ways as the result so what we do in this approach will be having an array to store result exactly how we did in the previous approach right difference is that we will start filling it with smaller sub problems first we have the base case which has been n is zero and we will update the cell as one there and then we trade through this array and at each step we add last k values from the array to get the ways to reach the current step but consider a case when n is one and we need to add last three values from the array as we have k as three so array zero will be one but if you try to access minus first position or minus second position index you're gonna get exception so we put a condition if the step minus j is greater than or equal to zero we pick that value and add it to the result otherwise we won't similarly for n equals to zero it will update one plus one which is two for three it will add all last three values one plus one plus two which is four and four it will add last three values these are one two and four which will be seven so that's the total number of ways to reach to the top 